Good evening, everyone. So let me share my screen and Satish Vadya. Uh, right, so uh, so this is a overview of uh, our lab. Uh, so once again, I am Satish Vadya, a professor in Department of Computational and uh, Data Sciences, the department that you are applying to. Uh, I also have, have affiliation uh, with Supercomputer Education and uh, Research Center. So we call our we call our lab as. Uh, uh, yeah, I think there is this automatic transition that I need to turn off. Uh, Um, just a minute. So one slide. Yeah. Okay. So right. Um. So we call our lab as uh, Mars Lab. Uh. Right. So the next uh, uh about thirty minutes. Uh, I'll give uh, some quick orientation of uh, what goes on in the Mars lab and uh, the prerequisites that are needed for joining for this lab. Uh, so uh, Mars standing for middleware and uh, runtime strategy strategies lab. Uh, so don't worry too much uh, about uh, the meaning of those words yeah. at this point of time. Uh, so it's that is not uh, needed now. Uh, so so what do we do? Uh, the main thrust in our lab is on parallel computing. OK, and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with parallel computing, uh, so uh, we can make this interactive. So what is what is parallel computing for those of you who may be knowing? Any ideas? What is what is parallel computing? OK, so uh, it's basically about utilizing uh, multiple processors uh, for execution of a single application. Uh, so most of you would have done a sequential uh, programming on a single pro uh, using a single process. That single process runs on a single core or a single processor. OK, now. Uh, what we want to do, what we do in parallel computing is we utilize multiple such cores, multiple such processors for executing a single application. Now, why do we want to do that? We will come to that. But how many, how many cores or how many processors, right? Uh, so uh, there are parallel systems, there are dedicated specialized parallel systems. Uh, which have uh, close to uh, even uh, uh, two mega cores, right? So two into ten power uh, two into ten power six, or even uh, right. So that was about at least a couple of years back, but now even uh, greater than that, uh, right? So that many number of cores. So so these are called as supercomputers, uh, okay, which are built with many large number of uh, uh, nodes and cores for the primary purpose of solving large scale applications which can utilize uh, which can be run in parallel uh, utilizing many of these cores or many of these processors okay so for those of you who are wondering what a core is uh, i think uh, uh, right so just remember your phone Right, so and remember the ads that come with these uh, mobile phones, where they speak about du dual core and octa core, uh, right? So quad core uh, mobile phones, right? So it's basically a processing unit. Okay, now but coming back to the supercomputer, so uh, uh, so basically we can go as much as we want, uh, uh, right? So just imagine uh, I'm asking you to make a transition from the sequential way of doing uh, things right so which you have been doing on a single core on on a desktop to utilizing multiple desktops multiple cores right uh, and uh, and i'm also saying that people are building such uh, large scale systems for the purpose of uh, solving a single application right so for the purpose of running a single application 
right so but why right so why do we want to execute uh, a single application across multiple processors okay in parallel okay uh, any ideas why do we need parallel computing it would help speed up computation help save time right okay so that's a very uh, right so that's uh, very obvious and most commonly uh, used reason right so which is uh, there are real a uh, large scale problems okay and uh, uh, these and there are problems that demand fast execution time okay uh, a simple example is uh, climate uh, modeling uh, clim uh, if you want to model a climate you want to model across the entire globe even to find out even to predict uh, the climate let's say in the bangalore region or whichever region you are in for that you need to model the uh, uh, various processes that goes on in the climate across the entire globe okay and uh, the way we do it is we divide the globe okay into 2d and uh, two dimensions and three dimensions and at each point we do some approximations and at each point we solve many equations involving many variables including pressure temperature ocean current salinity etc because all of these things have effect on the climate okay now uh, if you were to do this on your sequential machine uh, uh, with many thousands of equations, many number of variables, many number of dimensions across multiple grid points, by the time you predict it, okay, by the time you come up with some forecasting on your single machine, okay, so the event would have happened, right? So outside of your window, right? So you could have just looked outside your window and predict, but that is not what we want, right? So we want computer simulations to be able to uh, predict well in advance. So there are, okay, there are these problems that uh, there are these large scale problems which are hungrier for larger and larger number of uh, cores and processors. And there are problems that demand fast execution time, right? So climate modeling itself is one motivating example that I was just mentioning why it demands fast execution time because the faster the throughput, Okay, the faster the results, the scientist, uh, the better the scientist will be able to respond. Okay, and uh, the better the science that can come out of it. Okay, uh, that is the general, uh, uh, that is the general philosophy. Uh, but in stricter terms, for example, if uh, 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 we are, uh, I'm sure you would have been uh, hearing about machine learning multiple times since that's been a, a bus that's been a buzzword for long uh, so if you want to train a neural network model in machine learning okay under uh, normal circumstances it can take many days okay and you want to uh, okay you want to train these things fast and to be able to uh, use the trained neural network models for uh, real time inference and real time forecasting in a fast in a faster manner. You can't be waiting uh, for 10 days for the neural network models to get trained. OK, so uh, so these are some. Uh, so that is one more application where you want to reduce the number of days to a few hours. OK, uh, likewise drug discovery. OK, so uh, so typically when trying to invent a, a drug, OK, for uh, some uh, right so for uh, okay, for injecting into uh, some uh, human body or uh, right, so some other species, you want to model the effect the drug molecules can have on the protein molecules within uh, within the species. Okay, and you want to uh, and such molecular simulations will have to be done many many times to be to see the effect. Uh, on the human uh, body or any species body over a few days, right? So that will involve a huge number of time steps because each time step you're simulating a femtosecond of what is happening at the molecular level and all the way up to what and that you are carrying on multiple times to see the effect at the functional level. So huge number of time steps, okay? You can't afford to do it on sequential machines. You need multiple machines put together to solve that single problem. OK, so. Our lab is all about parallel computing, 
so it's a huge field. We work on some aspects of it. OK, uh, so as I said, there are few uh, exam. There are some examples which require parallel computing, climate modeling, drug discovery and uh, modeling and simulations in various domains, not only just these two kinds of applications. So I said I uh, I am associated with the supercomputer center, uh, right? So I also happen to be the chair of it, uh, right? So uh, about 34 departments of the Institute use these parallel machines belonging to various uh, domains, physics, aerospace, turbulence, right? So which do airflow turbulence uh, simulations, materials, uh, OK, so uh, and then earth sciences. OK, so you name it, uh, right? So in many of these domains, there are these real modeling and simulations problem that have to be carried out. And OK, you need parallel machines for that to get fast response time. OK, so I hope I have motivated you enough on why you need these parallel, why you need parallel computing. OK, but it's not e uh, easy uh, to develop a parallel program. There are challenges. Uh, so for example, the diagram uh, here shows uh, if you use two processes to execute a single application, uh, right? So if you don't do these things carefully, what can happen is that one of the uh, processes can be setting up the data while another process may be idling during that time. OK, so there is this idling time that is incurred in parallel computing and then the first process will have to communicate the data to the second process. So there will be this communication time and then both of these process will be executing. So let's say it's an iterative application. OK, and uh, proceeding across multiple iterations uh, and they on both of allowed to move to the next iteration together. OK, so it may so happen if you don't do this carefully, one process finishes early and uh, tries to synchronize with the other process. So there are the synchronization overheads. OK, so if you do these parallel, if you develop these parallel programs well, then OK, as one of uh, one of you just said, with increasing number of processors, this the application execution time is supposed to keep reducing. OK, however, if you don't do this carefully, many of these challenges will come into play. The computer, the communication and synchronization overheads will come into uh, the picture due to which your execution time may go down up to a point and after then those communication with more number of process, more the communication, right? So the more the people, more the talking, right? So uh, so that will result in communication overhead. You start losing your benefits and you may even uh, uh, get diminishing benefits. OK, so. Uh, so it is so parallel computing the uh, has these challenges and that b basically brings us to our lab. So uh, our lab's mandate is to deal with these challenges in developing parallel programs, especially of large scale applications. OK, uh, so our lab and the department itself, right? So deals with such large scale applications. So what, what do we mean, right? So what kind of large scale parallel applications we deal with? Uh, so that is our lab deals with uh, both scientific applications, including climate modeling, mesh, mesh based applications, molecular dynamics, etc. It also deals with computer science related uh, parallel application uh, that is development of uh, these applications, parallelizing these applications, right? So for example, graph up, graph based applications and uh, we have also uh, been accelerating machine learning and deep learning related related applications. OK, so on what kinds of systems on specialized parallel systems? So nowadays most of these parallel systems that I was talking about consists of heterogeneous mix of resources, uh, including multi-core CPUs, which you know about, and many core GPUs, which some of you may have heard and some of you may not have heard. So especially those, uh, for those of you for whom your parents have decided to gift a laptop and you are you are ready to buy a laptop, right? So that will be an option related to what kind of GPU you want on that machine, right? So GPU is, this uh, card that can be plugged into your uh, node and that will give you lots of processors. OK, uh, for now, the, uh, right? So just remember only that. So 
modern day parallel systems consists of both of the CPUs and GPUs. How can you execute uh, your application utilizing both the CPU and GPU resources in tandem, right? We call these as hybrid executions. Our lab extensively deals with these kinds of hybrid executions, okay, uh, trying to run a single application efficiently on both the CPU and the GPU cores, okay? Uh, so that is all. Uh, all this is related to accelerating, providing speed ups, right? So one of you mentioned speed ups, right? So providing speed ups to uh, to an, uh, to these kinds of applications on these kinds of systems. In addition, we also work on what are called as middleware aspects. Okay, so uh, um, in general, when we say middleware, uh, uh, it basically means. Uh, some layer of software that uh, tries to act as an interface uh, between application on one end and the hardware on the other end, right? So the earlier in the earlier slide we spoke about directly dealing with applications, uh, parallelizing it, coming up with uh, providing good speed ups, etc. Here we uh, work on a level below, right? So where uh, uh, we try to come up with these generic services. For example, can you predict the performance of a parallel application? OK, for really large number of cores. OK, so let us say you have used your mobile mobile phone or a, or a simple laptop to execute a, your parallel application on two cores. OK, now you can't be going and asking your parents. I have executed my uh, parallel application very well on two cores. Uh, now get me a, uh, 32, uh, uh, right? So get me a 16,000 core parallel machine. All right. So now the natural question is, uh, how do you know that the application that you so well executed on two cores will also execute efficiently on 16,000 cores or 8,000 cores? So can you try to predict your application performance on 16,000 cores using only these two core executions? Okay, this has got a number of uses. Okay, uh, it. Uh, it can help you as an application developer to fine tune your application for large scale uh, executions. It can also help fine tune the uh, architecture by the application architecture developers. The other important as middleware aspect that we so as you can see, this is a generic service, right? So that we try uh, that we build, which can be useful for multiple applications, not necessarily related to accelerating one specific application. So and that is why we call these as middleware. So one other kind of middleware concept that we work on is fault tolerance for large scale systems. The more the larger the parallel system, the more will be the faults on the nodes of the system. It could be hardware faults. It could be software related errors. It could be a sudden increase in temperature of some of the nodes. OK, because these are complicated machines, right? So at the same time, uh, every time you execute your parallel application uh, and if a fault occurs, you can't afford to start your parallel application from the beginning. Let's say it has a fault has occurred in the 10,000th time step or the 10,000th iteration of your application. You can't once again, you don't want to once again start from the beginning, uh, right? So and lose out all that precious executions. Right, so can you still withstand those faults and be able to continue from the 10,001th iteration? Okay, is what we call as fault tolerance. Okay, so our lab also uh, works in these areas. So in general, the themes in our labs are hybrid CPU GPU methods. Right, so how to execute a single application efficiently utilizing both the CPU and the GPU cores. Okay, so. Uh, so one of the major challenges uh, that I showed in the picture is related to communication that goes on in parallel applications. So how can you try to minimize the effect of the communication? Can you overlap that communication with some computations? Okay, a simple example is that let's say you go to a fast food counter. Okay, you order for let's say some dosa, right? So and then you get a token back, right? You buy the right, so uh, till the time that dosa is being prepared for you. OK, you try and do something else. Maybe you check your phone, you check, uh, you speak with your friends, etc. Right, so you're overlapping some other work with your primary, right? So with this main time consuming work of dosa preparation, right? 
So similar concepts can be applied in parallel computing where you try to overlap useful computations with communications. OK, and we also uh, I also showed in the picture picture synchronization is one major challenge. We try to reduce the global uh, synchronization that can happen across multiple processors. So some of the recent research highlights done by people like you, right? So uh, is uh, we developed uh, 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 right, so some of you may have learned about conjugate gradient. It's a it's an iterative method for solving the linear system of equations AX equals B, uh, right? So uh, so this uh, what we did was to overlap, uh, reduce the number of communications and overlap these communications with useful computations. This is what we mean by pipelining and uh, right. So we showed uh, high performance. OK, and uh, we have also recently developed certain IO optimization strategies. OK, because in parallel computing, reading large data can be really time consuming. How you can speed the speed up the IO? OK, the multi node we have also we also recently developed various graph algorithms uh, for efficient executions on multi node multi -de device that is multiple nodes each consisting of CPUs and GPU uh, resources. How can you use all of them to let's say do a single breadth first search? OK, so we did uh, uh, we uh, right. So we did for certain graph applications like minimal spanning tree community community detection, etc. We also have done work on acceleration of AI and ML applications. Uh, so so if you come to our lab, right? So uh, it's all about trying to win the race regarding uh, whether your how much how efficient your parallel application is, how much speed up it has given. So one of you mentioned about speed up, right? So this is uh, the red curve corresponds to our method. It is beating all the existing state of the art methods by a huge margin with increasing number of processors. OK, so that is what we mean by speed up, right? So uh, and we are also seeing that uh, our red curve, our method reaches the desired accuracy at a much faster rate. OK, likewise, this is an IO optimization strategy where we say that uh, our uh, strategies have resulted in about 60% reduction in execution times, right? So our lab's work is all about this, right? So trying to reduce the time, right? So and uh, right, so 60% reduction, uh, 20 20 times reduction, and so on. Okay. Uh, so we which we consider interesting. So some of our recent lab uh, achievements, uh, we have always been producing publications in leading conferences and journals. OK, we have large, we recently approved large funded projects, both from government agencies and industries, right? So uh, it just goes to show that uh, the agencies are interested in these kinds of large scale parallelization efforts. And one thing I forgot to mention here is that uh, our work on iterative solvers have gone into one of the open source parallel uh, software, which is high, heavily used across across the globe right so it's always a good feeling right you are producing something and that is being heavily used uh, right so by people around the world right so by researchers around the world okay so uh, those kinds of nice things can happen right so it and it can be made possible by uh, by you as well uh, so these are the various opportunities if you join our lab okay in terms of research okay you can uh, and uh, these are the various areas uh, right, so uh, depending on your interest, we can always discuss. Right, so that is once you get admitted, even when you get admitted, we can uh, discuss and then try to find a suitable area for you. So, uh, uh, as I said, our lab uh, has always endeavored to provide highly scalable uh, solution which ha which gives large amount of speed up. Right, so part of this is to identify the scalability bottlenecks in the application itself. So we also develop a generic middleware tool, uh, right? So that can characterize and automatically identify the uh, bottlenecks in your parallel application, removing which your application can provide high speed ups. Uh, so uh, we have also, uh, uh, there are also opportunities in developing high performance parallel IO solutions, both for scientific and machine learning, deep learning applications. 
Uh, so multi-node, multi-GPU frameworks, which is basically harnessing the power of both CPUs and GPUs we have been talking about for scientific applications, computer science related applications, and AI ML applications. Uh, so uh, once again, machine learning and deep learning have become uh, 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 have been of great focus these days and in fact uh, these years. Uh, our interest here is to try and see how you can reduce these lengthy training, uh, uh, these long training times that I was talking about. OK, so uh, the parallel computing community is moving towards an exascale era. So just Google for what is exascale. Uh, so here uh, for that era, what we want to do is to try and minimize the communications in many of these parallel applications as much as possible okay by developing what is what are called as asynchronous methods one sided communications where only one process is involved and not making all of the processes to come together for communication right so and approximate commute uh, computing where you get approximate results which are practical uh, to be used right uh, but they may not be accurate uh, accurate results but they may provide higher speed ups OK, and uh, fault developing fault tolerance frameworks for parallel scientific and machine learning deal, uh, deep learning applications, end to end solutions for scientific and societal applications, right? So where we take a real practical scientific rights so or societal application and end to end, we look at various components, right? So and parallelize them and together we provide a solution. So these are the various opportunities that exist in our lab. These are some of uh, the current uh, personnel. So we have a couple of PhD students, one working on that iterative application that I was mentioning about. Uh, so another uh, 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 right. So another student working on fault tolerance based on replication. Uh, and the another master student who is looking at another module related to the iterative solvers, uh, parallelization of iterative solvers. Right, so another student working on large scale parallelization of machine learning applications. So we will our lab will also uh, soon have project assistant dynamics. We will have right, so about four to five project staff working in working on critical projects. Right, so uh, uh, so by the time you come, right, so you will see uh, a lot of dynamics uh, in the lab. Uh, so uh, so some of the questions that you may be potentially having. So what background do you need to join our lab and what are the prerequisites? All we need is good amount of interest, background and fundamentals in uh, operating systems, architecture and algorithms at the at the level that you have already been through, that you would have already studied, right? But we just need you to uh, show appreciation of those uh, subjects, okay? and. Do we need to learn any new languages? Because I've been speaking about these large machines, 60,000 cores. Uh, OK, so do you uh, uh, it uh, it may all look complicated to you, but do you need to learn a uh, 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 highly complicated language? Not really. OK, uh, if you know C or Fortran, you only need to add a few lines to the code. OK, and uh, uh, you will also be given given training via courses. Once you join uh, the department uh, uh, courses like introduction to scalable systems and parallel programming, where we will walk you through the various steps of parallel computing and make you do parallel uh, computing assignments. And right, so believe me, I have uh, uh, based on all the previous courses that I have that we have covered here. It only takes about a month for someone to uh, get well versed and start writing parallel programs. So what will you be tested in the interview if you express interest in the Mars lab, right? So we will first start with some simple programming data structures and algorithms questions, and this is related to the research admission interview. OK, and then we'll move on to the following. We have mentioned this in the brochure. OK, so uh, operating systems concepts, including P-threads and file systems. OK, computer architecture. But primarily primary focus on these uh, topics, multi core CPUs, modern GPUs, differences between shared memory and distributed memory parallel architectures, different network topologies. OK, these are not uh, something for which you need to buy some dedicated books and read pages and pages, right? So just do some Google, just show some interest, right? So on some of these terms, right? So on that should be enough. OK, and uh, uh, so. Uh, likewise, there is this parallel programming interface called MPA parallel programming interface. Just Google for it 
and uh, you will be uh, led to an online tutorial. So just uh, read uh, right. So these three topics, right? So once again, these are all quick reads. You don't have to read pages and pages, right? So don't get uh, uh, right. So don't get depressed, right? So I'm seeing this slide, right? So but these are some of the uh, topics uh, that we'll be testing you on, right? So if you express interest in this lab uh, in uh, during the interviews, right? So with that, I'll stop here. Uh, so uh, 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 so just one small correction is I think in the brochure that was sent to you here, uh, a graph as a third point, we have also we had also added graph uh, algorithms or graph applications. So that is not there. It's only these three topics, right? Uh, so I've already consumed uh, 32 minutes of the time. I think uh, next there is going to be another uh, presentation. Uh, so what I will do is uh, I'll stop here. Uh, so you can always uh, leave any questions in the uh, chat box, right? So or you can just email me and I will try to uh, answer them, right? Okay, thank you.